Hey, I'm Carb Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, President of Carb. We're really excited to introduce a new Keltec P17 flat aluminum trigger. We got them in red and we got them in black. So whatever you want, red or black, we got those options available. Really excited about these. Took us a little while amidst all the craziness going on, but we got them done. Really happy about them and really love the P17. I mean, running this thing, it's been spot on and flawless too. Contrary to what the initial YouTube reviews were, I think Keltec actually ship them something that wasn't quite done, but they have finished the product and it runs great. And with these triggers, so much better than the factory plastic curve trigger. So really excited about this. You know, you can get your finger a little bit lower on that trigger, getting that nice sweet touch point, round after round, giving you a little more leverage as well, making that trigger pull feel about a half pound to three quarter pound lighter than the factory. So it's a nice, clean, smooth trigger pull. And the weight of this trigger pull from the factory isn't too bad, but we'll let you guys be the judge of that. Really excited to hear what else you guys wanna do for the P17. Really love what we did here. This is also gonna double as an unboxing video, so go ahead and enjoy that. Really excited to hear what you guys think of these new pistols with these new triggers. All right, let's get on our tabletop, show you how we did this. All right, guys, so here it is. This will double as your unboxing video. The new Keltec P17 22R pistol. Love this thing. For the price point, you just can't beat it. 200 bucks or less. So 199 is the MSRP. You can usually find them for 169 bucks. COVID prices, though, you're going to be looking at two to 300, unfortunately. But great little pistol for what it is. I mean, you can see all these little features. Little Picatinny rail under here. Yeah, a lot of plastic, usual. Ambi mag release here. So both sides, ambi safety as well. Little fiber optic front sight here, adjustable rear sights here. You really can't beat the value. Like I said, threaded barrel from the factory. We'll get into how to do all that here in a second. We're gonna be upgrading this baby. Of course, it's got a plastic trigger, curved. So we're gonna do away with that with a nice 6061 aircraft grade aluminum flat trigger. Really love the way it feels even feels a little bit lighter with this new trigger. Standard manual, which Keltec does a great job. You know, I really am impressed with lots of pictures. You know, you can't go wrong there. It explains everything in great intricate detail, all your specs there, even explains how to adjust the sights here. Really informative owner's manual. So I highly recommend taking a look at it. Love all the detail they put into it. Even go over how to do the disassembly, which we'll do here in a second. And then your exploded view, which is really nice and handy. So that's it. So there's the manual, the pistol. All right, we're gonna get into some detail here. And my bad, three mags. So not two, you get three. All right, your standard trigger lock, some stickers, and that's it. And then you get your tool kit here. So this tool kit, especially handy for what we're about to do. So we're gonna switch out that little thread protector and put on the extension for the threaded barrel. So you got your threaded barrel here, and this little tool that comes with it is gonna assist in all that. And then this is used to adjust your sight. So let's clean up this, jump into it. All right, so mostly cleaned up here, got rid of the box at least. So we got the pistol ready to go. We can go ahead and remove this little sticker here. It just means be safe. Don't shoot your eye out. <laughs> All right, so with 22 LR, three mags, love that. You know, polymer mags, but no issues so far, even with our testing. All right, so it's been pretty dang reliable, contrary to what we've heard from the get-go on this pistol. And when we first heard it, we were a little disappointed because we, we started on this trigger right out the gate. We wanted to be the first ones with a trigger for the P17 and really happy that Keltec fixed the issue. And I'll show you one part that is not on the exploded view, which we suspect is the fix for that issue. So we're gonna put the threaded barrel insert on after we do the whole installation process because to do the takedown disassembly, you'll need to remove the threaded barrel insert if you have it installed, but this tool makes it super simple. We'll get into that here in a second. Let me give you a preview. So here's your flat aluminum trigger. We've got them in red and we've got them in black. So you got red and black options, whatever you guys like. At the release of this video, the black is gonna be available first and then the red. So with the whole COVID BS, it's kind of slowed things down a little bit. So just bear with us, but it'll be there. Do a comparison here. You know, this is a good little way to get around dropping that firing pin on that chamber. You know, the 22LR, we're going to use snap caps in this video. So, you know, dummy rounds it just helps protect that firing pin, you know, being it a rim fire and all. So you can see this trigger leaves a lot to be desired. It doesn't really allow you to get low on that trigger. It doesn't allow you to get that sweet spot. You know, getting lower on the trigger, it's going to give you a nice touch point. It's going to help you stay consistent. And it's also going to allow you to get more leverage on that trigger pull. 
So it's gonna, in effect, make that trigger pull feel lighter, which is nice. If you were to try to gauge it, it'd be like half pound to three quarter pound lighter trigger pull just by getting that leverage you need right down there low on that little sweet spot. So we have that little shelf right there, which, man, this feels night and day different, better, looks awesome too. And 6061 aircraft grade aluminum compared to just standard injection molded plastic. So red trigger option and the black trigger option. So you just rack that slide back and you can kind of play with that trigger and see how it feels and it's fantastic. And we're gonna do this towards the end too to make a little adjustment. So putting it out now, the reset can be adjusted with this screw right here. So if you have this screw too tight, you're gonna to wanna to back it off and hopefully I'll remember to do that in this video. But if I don't, that's how you're gonna do it. So you're gonna kind of gauge your reset like this, the slide back you know, and adjusting the screw to make sure it's not too tight. And you know, I love to over tighten stuff, man. So don't be like me and over tighten it. So it'll be a, a sluggish reset if you do, but that'll be the solution right there is adjusting that screw. So let's jump into it. Let's go ahead and remove this plastic trigger from this factory P17. Really love it. Excited to hear what else you guys want us to do for it. Parts needed for this build, the aluminum Keltec P17 flat trigger, Biome Carbo, love this thing. 6061 aircraft grade aluminum black anodized and red anodized options available. So really excited about it. Love what this does for our P17. Gives you a nice sweet spot, allows you to put your finger lower on the trigger, reducing the felt trigger pull by a half pound, three quarters of a pound, giving that desired effect, repeatable, repeatable shot placement. Can't beat that. So we want something that is consistent, accurate, and enables us to get the most performance and accuracy out of our pistol. So here it is, the new flat trigger for the P17. Tools needed for this build, bench block, two millimeter Allen key, two and a half millimeter Allen key, regular tip flathead screwdriver, micro tip flathead screwdriver, little 1 inch punch, needle nose pliers, blue 242 removable Loctite. And you can see here, I've got a 22 LR dummy round. It's just a snap cap, just something to protect the firing pin. So it's not a live round. It is a dummy round, just all aluminum. You could use a spent casing as well, you know, meaning one that's already been shot, just to save that firing pin a little bit. You don't want that steel and steel contact if you can avoid it. Always guys, make sure we're an iPro. As always, before we begin, let's check our firearms together, make sure they're clear. So we'll check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this firearm's clear. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. What we're gonna do is first remove this thread protector up here. That's gonna allow us to actually pull this all the way back and do the field strip process. So you've got that handy tool that came with it. All right, and we're gonna loosen it right here so you can see how these little notches will fit over that thread protector. So you just kind of break it loose and then it'll just come right off. Pretty simple. There it is. So we'll set that aside. All right, now for the disassembly process, you're just gonna pull down on these two little tabs right here. Now by the owner's manual exploded view, this is called the buffer. So it can be a little confusing, you know, considering it's up here. I don't know. All right, so pull down on these two tabs, all right, the buffer, and you pull all the way back, just like that, and that slide's gonna wanna pop up. You can see that, how it just kinda popped out of place. And you're gonna let it slide forward, all right? So you got the slide, and then that little retainer just popped out, all right? And then there's the rest of the frame there with the recoil spring up front here. So this little retainer that fell out, I'll show it again here in a second at the end, but it's gonna drop right in like this. That narrow portion goes right in and it seats in like that. So we'll set the slide aside for right now, don't need that. And then we're gonna go ahead and focus on removing these screws, okay? Now don't get ahead of yourself, all right? It's really tempting. So it's a weird process. The easiest method is to remove these screws, these two big ones here on the right side of the firearm, all right? And it's a side without the other screws exposed. So we're gonna flip over and take out the little screws on this side all right, save the two big ones for the opposite side, and that'll be last. So let's go ahead and remove all the little screws first. Do not remove the little screws on this side. I'm telling you from experience, it'll be a headache to put back together. So little screws first. We're gonna need our two and a half millimeter Allen key for these, same for these, little two millimeter Allen key for the safety. All right, so just start removing all of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. They're all gonna look the same except this one. This will be your long screw right here. The rest will be little shorties. All right, so go ahead and start removing all those. This will be the most time consuming process right here. There's the first one right there.
All right, there's your long one right there. So you can see how it compares to the other little shorties there. So just slightly longer, it's pretty noticeable. All right, we'll keep removing all these screws. Just the grip screws, don't touch these till the other side. All right, so we just removed all eight screws. So seven of them are exactly the same length and you got one long one right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the long one goes right here above the trigger. All right, so now put those screws aside and flip over that frame. Should be on the right side now. And we're gonna go ahead and remove these two large screws right here. All right, and this will make life a lot easier. So I'll remove these two babies right here, two and a half millimeter again. And these, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we put the Loctite on them. All right, so just these two are gonna get the Loctite. All right, so exactly the same, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. So now we're gonna separate this thing. So we're gonna separate it from this side here. We just need to remove the safety now. So we'll take our little two millimeter, keep those together. Yeah, I know, man, my finger's screwed up. Feels like every time I'm filming, my fingers get jacked up just before filming, I know it, I know it every time. So take your regular flathead, all right, and you're gonna use this majority of the time. So you're separating the polymer and you can use your micro tip to get started, but if you use it the whole way through, you're gonna gouge your polymer. If that doesn't bother you, then no big deal. Keep on trucking, all right? So we can kind of surgically go through this. You don't even need to worry about this AMB mag release yet. It'll just come off with the whole thing. Now, most important, if you want to have an explosion, all right, when you separate this, leave that hammer back. All right, so let's go ahead and drop our hammer forward. All right, wanna make sure we're on fire. And we're gonna drop that hammer forward. You can just push down on it and pull that trigger. All right, now it's gonna release a lot of the tension on the internal components and we won't have to worry about a big explosion. And that always makes it a little bit easier when you're doing it for the first time. You can get a better idea how everything goes back together. So we'll start separating the polymer just a little bit. You know, we're just trying to find those little spots where it's really binding up. We're trying not to damage our polymer frame here. All right, I feel like I got a good little bite down here towards the end of the magwell. So I'm gonna get my bigger screwdriver in there. A little more displacement, just kind of prying along and you'll feel it give way here in a minute. You know, it's also gotta work through this ambi mag release as well. You know, you can try to pop that off. But thing is with the polymer, you gotta be super delicate. I mean, with our R&D guns, you'll notice they get a little, little chewed up after a while. So it comes apart nice and easy here on the backside of the pistol grip. But up here, you know, it's really retained quite a bit by this mag release. So I'm gonna pop that mag release off, at least try doing it without damaging anything. You know, and you can see there's a little bit of room right here to get your regular tip flathead in there but you could try to prime apart this way, but I feel like that's gonna just possibly lead to more polymer wear than necessary. So you can push down on that mag release like that and then shimmy your flathead in. You know, if you can use the wider flathead, you're less likely to do any real damage to that polymer. And you won't have to demonstrate this on camera, so it's gonna look a lot harder than it is. I'm doing it really weird like right now. So just kind of getting it in there and it's gonna feel kind of bizarre, but it just pops right out like that, all right? And then you're in there. But it's held in by a couple roll pins, literally roll pins on each side. So you can see that right there. So you got one sticking in it. All right, good. So we can set this mag release aside for the second. And now it should come apart pretty easily. We relieved a lot of that pressure holding that together. Now the trick is to do this without it exploding. So I'm gonna to try to be super gentle here. All right, there we go. Not too bad, I've seen much worse. That's one side, there's your hammer spring pin there that captures it. So we'll flip that over to this side. Might as well do it now while we're talking about it. Just grab your pliers and just pull that pin right out. Now everything's off the right side of the pistol grip frame. All right, so we'll put that right side away. Now we'll drop in our pin right here, get it seated, and then our hammer springs. Yep, there's two of them. We'll end up 
putting these back on this pin here in a second, setting that tension correctly. So let's do a little once over here on this thing. A little intricate, isn't it? It's pretty cool. So Keltec actually patented this, you know, very unique design. That's what I love about Keltec is they've always got something crazy, you know, that it's never been done. If you're interested, you can look at that patent there. Now here's the buffer, all right, it's those two little tabs that allowed us to actually do the field strip process, take the slide off, and you can see the spring that's captured underneath of it there. Always good to have a reference here, something to memorize. Now one part that's not on your exploded view is this one right here, and this is a little 3D printed part. So your barrel trunnion's right here, and what we're suspecting is there was a lot of play that was taking place, causing those issues that we heard about right out the gate on the P-17, you know, all the YouTube reviews and everything else. So this one's 3D printed, it's not on the exploded view, so we highly suspect this was the quick fix solution. 3D printed, so if it's a critical piece to this firearm functioning correctly, you know, I just wanted to throw this out there and see if you guys were interested in something better. So stainless steel would be nice, It'd be real simple to do, and we can put something in there, a little peace of mind, a little extra reinsurance that, you know, that's not gonna break and then lead to catastrophic malfunctions because that thing was just having a hell of a time performing out the gate. And you can see how everything will move quite a bit without that little spacer in there. So in case your little spacer jumped out on you, you know, that's how it goes. It at least fills the gap and when everything's bound together, it should keep it in better alignment. So it's interesting. You know, this part is not on the exploded view. So that's how it goes in, just like that. Pretty simple and straightforward. So we're not worried about it too much. I can show you a couple things just in case for reference, just from some experience ripping these apart. So this is the Ambi Mag release right here. This little spring will usually fly away on you. So in case everything went crazy on the disassembly. So this is your magazine catch right here. We're working on the left side of the frame. So this side's gonna go down, so it's straight with one little cutout right there. And then this side is gonna be up. So you can see how they're different. All right, so I'm gonna drop that baby back in. I know that'll be useful for somebody. And then the spring is just gonna go, you know, right back in place. You just kinda drop it in there and compress it against that mag catch. So pretty simple and straightforward. And that's an easy one to, to jump away on you. I'm really surprised mine didn't. Same with the buffer, you know, this would easily jump out. So this is how it'll all go together. Pretty simple, you got this little plastic piece for the spring to locate into, which kind of holds in there. And then the circle, you know, through hole will just line up with that long screw. Remember that long screw that we took out? So that's where it goes right in there and that's what captures it. So it'll just kind of position in here nicely and everything's kind of held together. You know, if you breathe on it too heavily, it'll all fly apart on you, so. That's just one little fair warning, but I really didn't find too much difficulty with this other than some of these simple nuances, you know, with the Ambimag release and then with this little buffer up here, you know, they're just kind of held in by thin air. So moving along, you know, we got the trigger bar here. So we'll just pull this whole thing out. All right, and you can see, you know, the trigger bar will come out too. Just kind of flops out of there like this, you know, so we can kind of dig into it a little bit deeper here so you can see the arrangement. You can see how the spring is oriented. All right, so this leg with a little short little hook on there, that's what's gonna be captured in the trigger bar, just like that. And this long leg here with that little bend on the end, it's gonna be locating right inside like that. So you're literally just gonna push it in like that and we go to throw it back in. And then this is the little hinge pin here for the trigger. So let's go ahead and do the trigger swap real quick. So we've got our 6061 aircraft grade aluminum trigger, Bime Carbo, love this thing. It just doesn't get any better than this. Nice flat trigger, feels so much better. I mean, you think about it, how much time you spend interacting with the trigger. You, know, you interact with that trigger more than any other component in this firearm. So do yourself a little favor there, give you something nice. You know, you deserve it. You saved a lot of money on this pistol, by the way. So here we go, open this baby up. Oh, and you got the little target. Still doing the targets. <laughs> I know of at least one guy that have shot it. You know, he sent me a picture. So I know at least it's useful here and there. So 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. This guy was pretty complicated to machine, but I'm glad it worked out and turned out great. So really excited about it. We'll do a simple little swap here. 
and we'll even stack them together so you can see a quick side by side. So we just memorize the way this spring is oriented. This loop is gonna go on this back strap area of the trigger. And then obviously the linkage for the trigger bar through the top hole on the trigger. All right, so we'll just pop this off. You know, you could do yourself favors, do a quick swap, but for the video here, I'll give you a little side by side. Hopefully I remember what I'm doing. We'll see. This is where the pins go. All right, and it gives you a kind of an idea of the improvement we're looking at. This is what you work with from the factory. <laughs> God, that looks terrible. Big old hook, you know, curved triggers. I won't be surprised if factory triggers just start coming flat. You know, soon enough, that'll be the way it goes because it's like, what, do we really need that? Let's go ahead and throw it together. Plastic aside, We've got our two pins, We've got our trigger bar and our trigger. So what we'll do is we're gonna set up, there's one pin with a little head on it and the other pin's just smooth straight pin. So the pin with the head on it is going up top. Go ahead and slide that pin right through the trigger bar like that. And then we're taking our trigger return spring. You're gonna hold it like this. So you get that little bend with the hook, you know, facing the back of the trigger, or, you know, whatever, pointing towards the engagement area of the trigger bar. It's gonna locate in that hole. I mean, that makes it easy. And then push your pin out a little bit. And then we're just gonna drop our trigger in like this. So just gonna lean it back and then just push that pin right through once you get it lined up. And that's kind of the easiest way to remember how to do it. And most importantly, you know, that loop of that spring on that back ridge of the trigger. So that's pretty straightforward. So all we got to do is just throw it in the frame and away we go. So you just kind of position it like this. You're just holding it all together like so. All right, you're just gonna push that long leg in up behind the barrel. You know, there's really no magic to that part. Get it straight. Now what we want to do is make sure we get the linkage captured before we throw that pin in. So you're just gonna kind of hold it in place like this. And it's a good thing I showed you how to do the safety and everything. <laughs> I knew it, that little guy went flying. All right, so release the trigger a little bit. And what we wanna do is we wanna capture that sear. So we're gonna drop this guy. You know, you wanna get it at least into the housing first. And lined up. So you hear that snap, always a nice sound. All right, and then just kinda take a look at it and make sure it's, yep, so it's good. So we're lined up accordingly. It basically just drops right in there. You can see that little tip of the hook on that trigger bar right there. See that? So you just wanna make sure it drops in. All right, it's not gonna do anything right yet. So don't worry about it, as long as you've got it dropped in there. So the sear is right here. So you can see that little flat right there. All right, and you can see our trigger bar linkage right here. It's kinda of hard to see. That's the hook right there. All right, so there you go. I just cranked up the brightness on the camera. So that'll give you a good view right there. So you can see the way the sear right here and that trigger bar interact. So you're literally just laying it over there. And I just screwed up all my alignment and everything, but you're laying it there so that it can do its job, move back and forth and engage that sear. So that's a good little internal shot there. Let me just fix the camera. So we've got our sear in place. You know, I'm gonna put the mag catch back together here in a minute. Most importantly though, we want our trigger to work. We want our sear to engage with that trigger bar. So I'm holding it in place, all right? I'm pulling back on this trigger. I've got my smooth pin right here and I'm gonna go ahead and set it. So drop it right through, making sure I find that hole on the other side there. There you go. So use all your fingers to line it up. All right, hold it in place and you're good for now. You can kind of play with it and see that it moves. Just want to keep, you know, good tension on it. Don't let it spring all over the place. All right, so we got our buffer still in place. That's great, didn't fly away on us, but our mag catch did. All right, so putting the mag catch back in the mag release, you see this smooth side here with a little notch cut out. So that's what we're gonna put down. This other feature here is gonna go up. So we're putting that down, and if you look inside your mag release, you'll notice down in there, there's a actual step. So, you know, the male feature to this female feature right here. All right, so this is the side we're putting down here. All right, we're putting it in like this. So we're gonna lock it in, 
straight down. And you can see how it's leaning back like this. You know, that's gonna allow us to drop that spring in real easily. And then what we'll do is we'll move it forward and then it's gonna lock right in place down in the polymer like that. So I'm gonna pull up a little bit so I can get past that little feature. And then I can just drop my spring in. You know, I like to use this little micro tip as an assist. Hold it in place, pull up to get past that little male feature inside the mag release and compress it until I can push down into the polymer like that. And it's gonna hold everything nice and tight together, which is super handy. So now moving on, we're gonna go ahead and set the hammer spring tension, all right? You got two springs there. So it helps if you just take, you know, your 1 inch punch and you just grab them like this. You can use pliers too, but you know, just make sure that hammer's forward. If your hammer's back, you're gonna stretch these springs and then you're gonna start getting light strikes. So make sure that hammer's forward. Now we're gonna pull and we're gonna make sure we get far enough back to drop those little hooks over that pin. And you can see how I've got mine. I've got my punch still in there. So I'm just gonna kinda hold them down, you know, into the pin and just pop that punch right out real quick. And they just snap right in place like that. You'll notice you know, these legs, these hooks of the spring don't quite want to go all the way down into the polymer. So all I'm going to do is just push these hooks kind of down past that polymer. So you just got to play with it a little bit. It really sucks trying to hold it like this, so I'm going to do it on the table. All right, but you see what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to, you know, push those little hooks down past that polymer so I can get them fully seated so it's not going to bind up when I put the actual other side of the grip on. So those are out of the way now. All right, so at this point, we're all back together. We're ready to put the other side of the grip back on. But before we do that, let's just quickly run through and check a few things. So our buffer's in place with the spring captured underneath. All right, that's good. Trigger's in place with that trigger return spring behind it. We're coming back to this. All right, and then our linkage is all in place here. Our trigger bar is capturing that sear on the inside. Our hammer springs are captured down here on that hammer spring pin. And then our mag catch is actually captured in the spring, in the mag release and everything else. So we're good, we're solid at this point. Before we put the other grip on, you gotta really pay close attention to this. This could be the most disheartening thing. You get it all back together and that trigger return spring, you can see how it's underneath the polymer here. It needs to be sitting on this polymer ledge back here. So what we gotta do is make sure we hold this trigger back to set that loop of the trigger return spring against the polymer right in here. That little shelf right there is where that's gonna be sitting. All right, so what we wanna do is just make sure that that trigger return spring is captured on the polymer. So just hold down on that trigger bar and you can pull back and you can see how it's captured at this point, right? And you pull back on the trigger and it's captured. I mean, it's right there. So what we have to do is keep the trigger in that position because if it goes all the way forward, it'll drop below it like that. So what we wanna do is just push back and then we're gonna tape it down. Electrical tape, masking tape. I find the electrical tape works good because you can slide it back through the frame once we snap it on. So I'm gonna pull it back. You know, it doesn't matter how far, just a good distance. I'm gonna wrap it till it can grab that frame and just kind of put the other piece down underneath. But you can see, I just kind of wrapped it along the side of the grip here. It's holding it back in position, which is nice. And the good thing about the electrical tape is that, you know, you can pull it, slide it through, and like masking tape, it might rip and stay in there. You don't wanna do that. So use some electrical tape. I should have mentioned that for the beginning in the tools list there, but kind of forgot about this little scenario. So trigger return spring has gotta be staged back like this. All right, everything else is in place, good to go. So we can go ahead and drop the other side of our grip on. We're kind of set on there nicely. The main thing is lining up this pin back here where the hammer spring sits. So if you look real close there, you can see I'm missing that hole. I'm just off just a hair. So I'm gonna just move it, my flat head, until I can get it lined up, and then everything's gonna snap real nice together. So we're good at this point. So now what we can do is remove this tape. We don't need it any longer. So just kind of holding everything together, I'm gonna to peel this tape off and just kind of slide it right through. And stuff always works good in the jam. Electrical tape. All right, so the tape came right out, harmless, nothing stuck, and my trigger moves nice and free. So that's key right there. We want a trigger that'll actually move. All right, so we're gonna take our mag release. You can see those little notches pointing down, those little serrations on the release itself. And I'm gonna line up the 
pin in the hole right there, and then there's a cutout right there that locates on the mag release. See that little square rectangular cutout? So that's gonna drop right in, and it's gonna hold the grip together and allow us you know, a couple free hands and not have to worry about it flying out of place on us. Quickly, let's put a couple of these grip screws in and we'll focus on the bigger screws here in a second, but mainly I wanna get this big guy in first. You don't need Loctite on these. And remember, we gotta set this big guy here in a minute to make sure our reset is good. You know, if you make it too tight, your reset is gonna be terrible. But for right now, we just need something to hold it together. It's gonna to allow us a couple free hands, put some Loctite on those bigger screws. And if you got that, you know, two and a half millimeter T-handle wrench that we sell, you can use it. You just don't go overboard on the tightness, I'm telling you. You know, that'll be what you have to adjust when you get it all together and you're like, man, this is, this is weird. My trigger doesn't move because it's so tight right now. All right, so that's holding it all together and that's allowing us the opportunity to quickly throw these in and then we can adjust everything nicely. So, you know, the reason I mentioned that, these two screws, these flatheads, are gonna come from kel with a ton of Loctite already on them. So it is a good idea to clean up the threads. You know, if you wanna get a nice bind on there, I'm just using some CLP and just kind of a rag and just wiping it off. And then if you got any, you know, stubborn Loctite, you just take a pick and just kind of scrape it off. It'll just make those screws going back in a lot easier, you know, rather than fighting that old crusty Loctite, which ain't gonna do anything much. And it doesn't have to be pristine, but you just want something that'll thread. All right, so we're good to go. So I got mostly good clean threads there. Now I'm gonna put them right back in here. A good generous amount of Loctite will work. You know, they used a ton from the factory as well, so we're not gonna skimp on this. We don't want these things backing out. You know I like me some Loctite. I know, man, I was a kid that used too much glue in school, you know, when we had to make crafts and things. Elmer's glue, man, I, paper would be like soaking wet. Teacher would be like, what are you doing? All right, so make sure they're good and snug. You know, this is where you can get away with really cranking them down. I mean, not to the point that you break the firearm. This is all plastic here with some metal in between. Now that baby's nice and tight. Okay, well, you're good. I like to over tighten stuff too, so don't let me get carried away, guys. All right, we gotta keep it within reason here. At this point, we are pretty good. Obviously, we need to put our little safety back on, but we are pretty good in terms of everything's held together. Now we're just finishing touches here, so it's not a huge risk right now of things going wrong for us. A little two millimeter Allen key, and just tighten up that little ambi safety in there. just good and snug and tight. You know, if the safety obviously feels really stiff, it's because it's too tight. So you can loosen it up. All right, good. So looking good. So we're all done on this side here. On the right side of the frame, we're good. So back over here, we're gonna put the rest of our little shorties in. Take care of our little shouties. All right, so just thread all these babies back in. You know, good and snug. They don't need to be super tight, but if any of them are gonna be loose, you want this one, the big one over the actual trigger to be, you know, loose or. All right, good and snug, and then just keep going along with them. I'm just trying to keep equal tension as I go, just kind of feeling them. These aren't as crucial on the torque spec per se. This one here in the center is gonna be the most crucial with a torque spec which at this point will just be, you'll see in a second, just kind of adjusting to your reset likeness. All right guys, so at this point, the frame is entirely back together, which is awesome. We're almost done. So we got all eight of these screws back in on the grip side. All right, and then these two 
on the right side. So left side, all eight of those grip screws in. We got the two major screws here that we removed and then the actual safety back on. So we're good to go up until this point. But remember we did tighten this just to give us a little extra assist during the reassembly, a little more than we needed to. So we tightened it up pretty good. And you'll see that's evident here when we go to pull the trigger and that baby sticks back. So we wanna make sure we loosen it up so we actually have a reset. So that's what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna more or less get it to our liking and it'll kind of tell you where you need to be on the tightness. So not incredibly crucial to have this thing super tight. It's actually negative to have it super tight. So once you feel comfortable with that reset, that feels a lot better. Just go a little more because I don't want to have a slow reset. There we go. All right, nice and springy. So that's what we want. All right, now that we got the frame all back together, we're good to go. Just make sure your hammer's locked back. So pull that hammer back, all right? And then take your slide and then take that little sleeve. That little sleeve is gonna insert into the slide. So you can see there's that little narrow end, that tapered end that's going straight down. And there's a little channel cut out on that sleeve for the recoil spring to locate into. So we're gonna press that recoil spring right in there. Now be careful, you're gonna to have to guide that spring all the way through. So don't let it kind of bend out of control here. It's super light. So if you guys want an extra power option, we definitely want to make one. I think it's a great idea, just considering the cycling operations on this and all that blowback you get to the face when you're shooting this thing. That's the only downside. All right, we're gonna pull down these tabs. And we're gonna pull it all the way back. And just like, you know, we did to more or less pull it apart. There we go. All right, so it may slide back and forth or it may not. All right, so the key to this is having your bushing back installed. So definitely, if your slide is locked up after you put it back together, that's what you need to do. So you can go with the standard bushing if you don't want to have your threads exposed because there is no thread protector that comes with it. Or you can go ahead and put your threaded bushing on if you're going to go ahead and run some kind of muzzle brake or a suppressor, hopefully. The most fun. So just tighten that baby on, hand tight. And then you've got that tool that comes with it. All right, this takes that little thread protector off and then this will put the actual external threads nice and tight on there. All right, so you can tighten it right on good. You can also use a socket wrench in there or you can just use an adjustable wrench to tighten this thing right on. So we are good to go at this point. We are all set, all right? And then your slide should operate and function normally, which is awesome, love this and your trigger should reset, feel good. All right, let's test a couple things. So we're gonna test our mag release first, just empty mag, just wanna make sure we got that right, and we did. All right, so it'll release the mag, good. All right, we can throw a snap cap in there, which is a dummy round. You can see there's just one piece of aluminum there. You can use a spent casing as well, just to protect that firing pin. We don't wanna have any steel on steel contact if we can avoid it. So we'll see how that, oh yeah, that feels good. Man, that is way better than that factory plastic trigger. Oh, that's perfect. You guys are gonna love this, man. I'm really pumped about it. Can't wait to get these out and see what the feedback is. And that always gets us excited, man, to do the next project. So really looking forward to the feedback on this one. Let's go do some shooting. All right, guys, let's see how she runs right out of the box with the new flat trigger installed in the kel P17. So the nice thing about this pistol, man, you can't beat the value, the $200 price point. Like I said, you could probably get them for 169, but the COVID prices make it a little harder. And then you can spend your money on your suppressor. Love that we've got a 16 round 22 LR pistol that is threaded from the factory for less than 200 bucks. Can't beat that. So I'm gonna shoot it suppressed. I've got technically high velocity ammo here, but it's not too bad to shoot without ears. I just want to demonstrate it. You can get suppressor ready ammo that's, you know, 1,000 feet per second or less. The guy shot all the suppressor ready ammo, so I'm gonna do the best of what I got here, but it should be fairly tolerable, but you can get so quiet with the 22 LR. I mean, it's, you could shoot anywhere. <laughs> Ran clean. All right, so you get three mags with it. Beautiful. 
So like I said, Caltech did a great job fixing whatever issue they had right out the gate. You know, those initial reviews on the P17 were pretty harsh and it made me a little worried too because I was super excited about this pistol, the price point, and it's a patented design as well. Very unique, you know, as you saw during the teardown. So it's pretty cool to have something like this. And that's what I love about Keltec. They're always doing something different and crazy. So keeps it exciting. Clean. So love what we got here, man. Awesome $200 pistol. And like I said, man, if you shop those deals, you can probably get it for less and then you can spend your money on your suppressor and it's cheap to feed too. So it's nice to have something that is super quiet that you can shoot anywhere. Thank you, Carl Brothers, for all your ideas and your support. Really appreciate you guys. And as always, happy shooting.